Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall video. So today we're going to be looking at version 1.4 of the Darkfall VFX nodes. So to download the new version just head over to our blog and then if you scroll down and click this link here it'll take you to the add-on script then all you need to do is just download this and just save this to a folder that you'll remember then you can go ahead and open up Blender let's go to edit then to preferences and then first we need to go to add-ons and then if we search for the previous version go ahead and remove it and now we can install then navigate to the folder where you saved it then go ahead and install from file now we can activate it and there we go so now we have this let's change this to the compositor window let's go ahead and change this to the darkfall vfx window so this week's update we have one new tool if we go to the tool section we can see we have the marker removal node so first let's go ahead and click the additional nodes and we're going to need a movie clip and a mask so if we go up here click the plus button then we go to vfx we can add in a motion tracking so i'm just going to move this out of the way Let's go ahead and load in a movie clip. So this is the clip I'm using and I got this clip from Hollywood Camera Work. It's a cool website, it's got loads of different examples you can download and use um, for tracking and green screening and loads of other different things. So I'll leave a link in the description, go ahead and check them out. But this is the example I'm going to use. So what we're going to do is get rid of these dots, these tracking markers off her face. So it's really easy to do. Let's go ahead and make some space here. First let's set scene frames which will set the timeline to be the length of our movie clip. We can also hit prefetch just to prefetch this. So it's a really good example of this because she moves her head in loads of different directions and uh, we can see all the different positions that she does. And as you would have saw from the example, it does a pretty good job. Now let's go ahead and add some tracking markers. So for the tracking, you can use your preferred settings. I'm gonna change this to location rotation, change this to previous frame, enable normalize. Then I'm going to go over here to track, just change it to the track window. And then now I can control left click and add a tracking marker. So if I want to see the search size, I can hold alt and press S just to enable this. Or I can go over here to clip display and just enable it here. It's entirely up to you which way you do it. So now I'm just going to scale this down a bit and then press G, move this over. So now I'm happy with this tracking marker. What I can do if I click this button here, now when I add a new track, if I control left click, it will be the same size and the same settings. So I'm just going to control left click and just add some more markers here for these dots, like so. Then press A to select all of them, track these forward. And then if we play through, just make sure these tracks stay on point. And they do a pretty good job considering the film is a bit grainy or a bit blurry, we can see. So now we have this, let's change this to the masking mode. And we can do that by going over here and change it to the masking mode or we can just press tab and it'll switch between them then up here if we click new we can add a new mask and let's go ahead and name this now depending on your example or depending on the scene that you're working on you might need to create more than one mask which we actually do need to do in this example but for now I'm just going to create one just to show you the problems that you will face so right now we can see all the markers are selected. Let me just press tab, go back to the tracking mode. And if we press A twice real quick, so A, A, dead quick, it will deselect all of these. Then press tab, go back. Let's go ahead and start over here. So if we click on this marker here, we can select it. So then I'm gonna left click here just to add a 2D cursor. So chances are you're using the new layout or the new um, button configuration. So for you, you're probably gonna have to press shift and then left click just to add the 2D cursor. Now once we've added the 2D cursor, shift A, and we can add a circle. Then if we press S, we can scale this down. We can zoom in as well, get a bit more accurate. So we kind of want to leave an edge around the dot, so I'll scale this up a little bit. There we go. Now since the tracking marker is selected and the mask is also selected, I'm going to press Control P, and now it's been parented, like so. And now we're just going to repeat the same process, so select a marker, add your 2D cursor, shift A, add a circle, scale it down, control P, parent it, and there we go. 
So I'm going to quickly just do the rest of these and it'll, it'll take a few seconds and I'll be back with you guys in a second. Okay, so now I have these parented and we can see that they move along with the track, so it looks pretty good. Now if we go back to the general workspace and then add our marker removal node. So just connect these up. Then if we select the movie clip icon, choose the movie clip that we've already loaded in. Then go down here and just enable the backdrop. Now if we select this marker mask here, select the mask icon and choose the mask that we created. And then we can go ahead and plug this in to the marker removal mask slot. And there we go. So now we can play around with these settings here. So again, you can use, you can zoom in and use these values, or if you have this node selected, if we go down, we have this properties window and you can use it here. So you could probably move these out of the way and just play with this. It's entirely up to you which way around you do it. So we have a few inputs. Uh, we have position X and position Y. For some examples, you'll need to move it on one axis or the other. For this example, I find moving it up or down so on the Y axis works best. So now if we move this on the Y, you can see we'll start getting rid of these dots here. Maybe change this to 19, maybe a bit more. So now we've just moved these out of the way. We need to clean these up a bit. Uh, we can see we have sharp lines here for the circles. Let's go ahead and feather these. I'm gonna give this a small feather amount, maybe 12. So that looks good, pretty soft. Now we have to change the brightness. We can see they're a bit dark. So let's go ahead and increase this just a bit, maybe 1.2 or 1.3. So this looks okay. Uh, up here we have a bit of an issue and that's why I mentioned before we might need to create more than one mask. Um, but we still need to change this. We can see it's quite red here because we've increased the brightness. So that's why I've added a saturation value. So I'm just gonna reduce this a little bit maybe 0 0.93, let's see how that looks good, that looks pretty good. So I mean right away we can see these three here, these four actually look pretty good. Whereas this one here, we can still notice it because it's using a value that's a bit too bright for it. So what I need to do is go ahead and uh, fix that. I'm just gonna show you how I would do that. Let's jump to the motion tracking. So if we remember this one up here, select one of these vertices and then press L, it'll select all of it for me. Then press X, delete it. Then let's add a new mask name this marker removal 2 or mr 2 i guess is the uh, is the name so mr2 and then again select this marker go ahead and add your 2d cursor shift a add a circle scale it down control p it's been parented just make sure yep then go back to the general workspace now we could duplicate this node we can just shift d if you wanted to or you could go back to the marker removal node and add it here. So since we're gonna use this pretty much the same uh, properties, we're gonna just duplicate it. Just connect it up. Then we need a mask, so we can select this one, Shift D, bring it over here. Now we need to select the mask icon and change it to the second mask, and then plug this one in. So it looks the same as before, that's because we need to now decrease this brightness a bit. So maybe 1.1. Let's try that, that looks pretty good. Again, we have this one up here that we could do, so we could go back, change this to the first mask, get rid of this one, add a new mask, and just do the same process that we just did. Then add a new node, add a new mask, and then just tweak the values to get something that uh, looks better. But I think if we just select both of these nodes, move them out of the way, and then press M just to mute them, we can see this was before, and this is after, and it works pretty good no matter what position she's in. We can see it's a bit more noticeable up here. So that's why I would separate it. I'm definitely going to go and change that before I render this out. But when you are ready to render it out, just go to the render settings up here. Go ahead and change the video resolution. Uh, I remember this is 30 frames per second, this video. Uh, then we can go ahead and save the file output. And then I want to render this as a movie clip. Change this from PNG to an FFmpeg video change your container and if you want to change the color management go ahead and do that and then go ahead and render it out so that's the marker removal node and hopefully you guys find it useful 
So this will work with a whole bunch of situations, maybe not everything, but um, it's a quick and easy way to get rid of facial or tracking markers in general. I guess it could work on floors as well and other objects. So go ahead and try it out and let me know what you think of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you are enjoying the add-on. If you are, be sure to give this video a like. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.